Good afternoon or morning, wherever you are across Australia. It's Darlene McLennan here, who's the manager of the Australian Disability Clearinghouse and Education and Training. Um, firstly, I would like to acknowledge um, that I am on um, Lutruwita, Tasmanian Aboriginal land. I acknowledge with deep respect the traditional custodians on the land, of this land, the Palawa people. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. And I would also like to acknowledge the Tasmanian Aboriginal community who continue to maintain their identity, culture and Aboriginal rights right across Tasmania. Thank you for joining us today. Um, due to popular demand, we're excited to be bringing you the second webinar from Troy Weller, the Learning um, Delivery Specialist from Microsoft. Troy is going to present with us today um, some show us some more accessibility tools available in Windows 10 and Office 365. Troy presented to us in June this year um, and it's fantastic to have Troy back with us and it was great to see that people um, in their evaluation asked for more. Um, before we start, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you haven't been on our webinar um, system before, you can activate the closed captions if you click on the CC button in your toolbar that's located either at the top or bottom of your screen. To increase the number of lines appearing in that caption box, click on the small arrow on the top right hand side of the caption box. If you are having any difficulties with technology, you can email us at admin at adset.edu.au. Troy is really happy to be asked um, questions throughout the presentation. As we're not aware of if people's microphones or so forth are going to, um, to work, if you could put your questions into the chat um, pod, the chat box, you should be able to see chat there in that toolbar. Um, and I can ask them throughout the presentation so that um, you know we can catch Troy at the moment you're asking that question, hopefully, if there's not too many coming in. Um, and if you in that chat pod, you can actually choose select all panellists and attendees. And that's a great way to kind of get, keep people connected into, um, you know, to what are the other, some of the questions. And sometimes, you know, some of our um, wise uh, attendees can also answer your question um, at the same time. So it kind of also makes it a little bit more interactive. Um, so we're hopefully to um, talk for around 50 or so um, minutes. Um, and I just heard a noise and I was worried that we lost somebody, but <laughs> hopefully not. Um, all right, so what I'll do is hand over to you, Troy, and um, thank you very much. And I'll chat to everybody at the end of, um, we'll throw out with the questions and at the end of the, of the, um, the webinar. Thanks, Troy. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. So I'm just making sure that everyone can hear me. Yes. Yeah, we've got sound. Okay, fantastic. Um, so yeah, well, thanks for having me back. I was um, thinking about this as it was coming up and wondering what it was that I was actually going to present on. And I remember that last time when I did my presentation, I, I rushed through and um, tried to get as much as I could in there. And then, and then when it was time to do this, I thought, oh, I should have slowed down and saved some of the best. Um, nevertheless, here we are. So I, I will say up front that what we do when we present these kinds of things is we certainly show the, the best stuff first, the most sort of wow stuff. But for, for people with different challenges and different needs, some of what I'm going to show today may be just what... Um, just what the doctor ordered, so to speak, or just just what you're needing just in time. So I hope that that is the case. Um, on the screen here, um, I've got, and I'll just come over here. These are my contact details here. I'm going to make these um, slides available to you. I'm also going to make them available to you as a um, PDF. Um, and so the links and bits and pieces are there for you to access. Um, I that's obviously my email address. That's me on Twitter. That's me on LinkedIn, and that's me down there on Facebook. Um, please remember uh, that I say this with humility. I'm not a help desk, and um, because I'm not a techie, um, the best thing to do when you hit uh, technical snags and before you even reach out to me, of course, is go into your favourite search engine and type that question as you know as detailed as you can. Like you know, how do I set up Translator in Microsoft Word or something like that? And you'll usually find that there's been a lot of people that have built that stuff out. Um, to be accessible through through the web. So uh, keep that in mind first before you, you reach out to me. But if you do get stuck, by all means, reach out and that's what I'm here for. So last time we spoke and then I shared, I was talking to you about Sachin Adela 
um, our CEO, who has uh, a couple of kids who are, who are challenged um, in different ways. Um, but he came up with this mission statement, which is our mission is to empower every person and every organize, organization on the planet to achieve more. And you can see there, I, I began underlined every person. And that's definitely part of Microsoft's mission is to make sure that every person, every organization is able to achieve more. Um, and there's a, there's a degree of responsibility there to make sure that we have um, universal design principles built into to what it is that we're building and what it is that we're releasing to the general public. What I thought I would do today, and remembering that I spend a lot of time in K-12 to um, and I support um, you know, mostly, mostly teachers in, in the K-12 to space. That being said, we certainly do move into the university space and of course do move into the, um, you know, into the workplace in what we do as well, but I'm not necessarily always there. So um, I want to show you some of the, the math support tools and I know that these would have really helped me in um, second year psych when the stats started to get really uh, over the top. Um, but nevertheless, um, this does really sort of target itself more to uh, K to 12. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, share a different screen. So just give me a moment. I'm just going to click on that. There we go. So I'm assuming you guys can see that now. Yep, yes. we can. Okay, yep. great. All right. So, so what you've got here is you've got um, the maths. Uh, a maths equation there. Um, you can't see me right now, but I've actually got a stylus in my hand. And if you've ever tried to do maths with a keyboard, you're going to know that's going to be very, very difficult. But this is inside OneNote. So the app is OneNote, and this is OneNote for Windows 10, but you can also use this OneNote inside the, um, the browser. And as I start to write my my equation, um, you can see it's obviously much easier doing that with a stylus um, if you've got a stylus device and I'm just going to rub that out. Um, but what, what we've got here is the ability, now I'm going to just click on the lasso one and I'm going to highlight that and then I'm going to push the maths button here. Now what happens when I've clicked that maths button is that it's actually read my equation. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so we can all get that a little bit clearer. Um, so it's actually read my equation. Um, if it read it wrong, I could use the fix it button there um, and, and make the changes that I need to. Or I can also click uh, ink to maths. And ink to maths would actually print that out onto my page. And you can see it there where it says Microsoft Forms just underneath there um, is where it's printed. But here we've got this select an action over here on the uh, right hand side. I'm going to click select an action. There's a couple of things I can do. I can plot it in 2D. I could plot both sides in 2D. I taught grade one for a very long time. I don't know exactly what that means, but apparently it's really good. Um, but what I do know is I do know about solving for X. So what's happened is from my handwritten equation, it's actually solved it for me. And so you can see that there on the, on the right hand side. Um, but where it gets really cool is if you look just underneath, or if you're aware, just underneath it says show steps. I click on that and it's going to give me the steps for solving the linear equation. Um, so what we've got there now is a step-by-step -step tutorial showing me how to solve that equation. So the real life story um, in, in my world is my son was struggling with, with one of his maths equations, neither his mother or I could help him. We're just not you know, inclined towards maths. And um, I was able to show him this um, and it was able to, you know, to give him the support that he needed until he saw his teacher. But where it gets even cooler is if I click on the immersive reader button in the top there, um, hopefully that's going to, there we go. So the immersive reader button now reads maths equations. So um, hopefully this is going to give me sound and you can let me know, ladies, if it doesn't quite come through. I'll just let that load up. Steps for solving linear equation. Yep. Subtract three from both sides. X equals four thirds minus three. Convert three to fraction nine thirds. X equals four thirds minus nine thirds. So I'm not going to go over the whole immersive reader function, but just being able to have that uh, equation read, then the equation broken down into steps, and then having those steps read to us is really cool. And of course, there's still the ability in immersive reader 
to translate that into whatever language, whether it's word by word or the entire document as well. So I thought that's really good. The other thing that I will show you, and this is where I was thinking about myself um, trying to do uh, stats, is if I, um, excuse me, I'm just gonna add a page here. Um, so if I was to type a, a series of numbers like 12, oops, excuse me, 89, 67, 87, 13, 12, okay? And now when I come back and click that maths, that maths button, it's gonna actually read that number of, of maths, oops, excuse me, I need to highlight it. It's actually gonna read those, those numbers and give me a, a whole heap of options. I'm just gonna have to move my, um, zoom thing there. Um, yeah, so you can see here what it can do for you. So it will sort those numbers, it will show you the mean, the median, the mode, least common multiple, etc, cetera, etc, cetera. even down to the standard deviation. That's where I said myself in um, second year psych, this would have been absolutely brilliant. Um, but not only will it solve that for me, but it will also give me the steps okay, to find those. Um, and for example, if I'm looking for the mean, it'll show me that. And then again, the solution steps, etc. So it's really, really cool if you're um, doing anything that's got a, any subjects that have a, a maths bent and that you need that, that degree of support. So remember, it's not just gonna give you the answer, but it's also gonna give you a step-by-step -step, um, solution and show you exactly how that answer is, is found. Okay, great. Let's get now, back Troy, to just your um, camera's moved too, so we can't see you. Did you wanna put that back on your Oh yeah, sorry. Or... That, yeah, that's because that's right. of the way I was doing my screen there. That's okay. Cheers, otherwise you can turn it off either way. Thank you. Okay, so let's go back to my, my PowerPoint. I'm assuming you guys can see that. Yep, all good. Great. Apologies, I'm just, there we go. Okay. So that was the demo, so let's keep moving. Now the other thing I wanted to share with you today, which I did talk a little bit about last time, um, was Microsoft Translator. Now Microsoft Translator is found at translator.microsoft.com. There is a web, uh, a web portal that you can use to use Translator, but you can also download these onto your um, apps. Uh, sorry, sorry, download the apps onto your phone and onto your, uh, iPad, etc. Um, so you can see that the picture that we've got here is we've got a young boy that's sitting in front of the translator tool. Um, he's actually got cochlear implants um, and he's looking at a real-time translation um, of what the teacher is saying in his class. So the way it works is that we, um, we start a conversation, then we share the conversation code with other participants, whether they're coming in on an app or, or, or a web, web browser, and then you start to speak in your language. And then it will either deliver a same language transcript or you can change that into multiple languages, right? So what we see here is this is a guy named Will who I've met, he's one of the program developers and a very amazing man in terms of what he's, um, what he and his team have built. Um, but he's delivering a, a lecture to a, a group of Chinese students. He's speaking in English. Um, the, you can see behind him, or if you, if you can see, the captions behind him are coming up in English. But these boys have all logged into this, boys and girls have logged into this with their mobile devices. And so they're actually getting the, the translation and the transcript coming through in Chinese. What we can see here as well is this is a meeting. Okay, so we have a, a group of, of people from all different cultures. So we can see we've got Chinese, Japanese, Korean, um, Spanish. The man at the front is, is speaking, uh, obviously in English. On, on the screen, you can possibly see that the transcript's coming through. But all these different people in different languages have actually logged in on their mobile device and they're watching the, trans, the transcript um, in their language. 10 of those languages can actually uh, have a spoken voice. So what some of those ladies in that room could be doing is plugging their headphones into their device. And if they've got one of those 10 spoken languages, they could actually be listening to the translation um, in real time. Troy, do you have any um, suggestions for the best headset, headset for, to use for the translator? 100% I do. 
can we hold that question because that is yep. a, an absolutely brilliant question um, and what I'll do is I will take us back to uh, the website and we'll have a look at the list and I'll show people where to find those that list Great, because it's exactly you. right there are headsets and there are headsets and the better higher quality headset you have the more um, positive your experience will be with this with this tool what we see here now is at that same meeting this this lady who speaks only Chinese so she's reading along um, with the with the translation, but she's got a question now for her uh, for the speaker. So what she's able to do is hold the speaker the the microphone button down, speak into her phone, and then our speaker will either see it in the transcript in English, and or hear it um, in his in his headset. So it'll do that translation in real time. There's probably nothing as good as a uh, real world translator that is a human being. Um, but when that's not possible or when that's out of your price range, using this tool is, is really quite cool. So Microsoft Translator, how it works is it's a smartphone app um, for in-person multi-device translation for two or more participants, right? So there's 10 speech languages and 63 text languages. Um, you can have up to 100 participants at the same time calling in. Um, and then, of course, the apps are free on iOS, Android, Windows, um, etc. And so as long as you've got a browser on your device, even if you don't have the app, you can still log in and use that. So what I thought I might do is I might actually, I'm just going to turn my share off and, excuse me, I'm going to stop sharing. All right, so um, Darlene, can you see my video in full screen or not? Um, I can see, yeah, I, I might have it set up differently, but I have I can see your head without a PowerPoint, but I can also see me, Jane, in caption us. I don't know if other people, does okay, someone want to write in the chat if they can? I'm just see? wondering if, yeah, if you hover over my picture and go over to spotlight video, it should make it nice and big. Um, okay. But what I want to share with you guys is I want to share with you. So I've got my, oh, that's it. Great. So that's my, um, that's my iPhone there. Yes, even working for Microsoft, I enjoy my iPhone. And I've got the Translator app. So when I turn that on, it gives me a, a, a few different options. So um, I've got the ability to take photographs of, of uh, foreign text and translate that. Um, in, back into English or vice versa. I've also got the ability to type my, my text and translate that into other languages. Um, I could open a call and invite people, but the one I really like is this one here. So what that does there is that actually gives me the ability to um, translate in real time and hear it in real time through my phone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the language here to uh, Chinese which is one of the ones that I've downloaded. And it's good to download the languages that you need so you're not stuck um, using the internet. Um, and then what I do is I click this little button over here and that actually turns my phone into a, a two-way device, okay? So um, hopefully the sound's gonna come through through my microphone, but I'm just gonna show you how it works. So if I was to say into my microphone here, hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day. You know what I did? Turn the volume down so no one could ring me. Let's try that again. Hi everyone, I hope you're having a good day. Okay, we're not getting sound. Um, but basically what happens there is that actually starts to speak. You can see that the Chinese comes up um, on the other end. Now what the other person could do is by holding this, I stand at one end and my Chinese speaker stands at the other end, we can actually start to have a conversation with each other. So the Chinese person would say, uh, I don't speak Chinese very well, but we can try. All right, so you can see there that it comes up and it says I'm fine and you'll be able to actually hear that as well. Now where that works really well for, um, for the hard of hearing is that because it's doing that, we could do English to English and we could be on multiple devices. And you may have seen it in the video that I showed you last time. Um, people can actually be, be, be talking um, or typing and then People that can hear will be hearing, people that um, can read can be reading, and we can have real-time conversations without needing to know sign language um, or having a, a captioner there uh, on site. So it's not for a second replacing some of the things that we've um, 
that we come to depend on, but it, it will certainly um, uh, add, add to that. Okay. So, Troy, what are those 10 languages? Uh, the 10 languages, I'm sorry, I don't have them on, on hand right now, um, but we can go in and have a look. So that's what we're going to do now anyway. So I'm going to okay, open up great. a, um, I'm going to open up a browser. I'm going to find where my browser is. Here we go. So if we come into um, translator.microsoft.com, I'm assuming you guys can see that, correct? Yep. Yep. Well, so I come up, into yep. translator. Oh. Yep. Yep. And languages. So if we were to click on languages, um, that's going to tell us what languages are spoken and what languages are text only. So we can go in there and have a look at those. Um, but what I would do want to show you is here in for education, I'm clicking on the link for education. There's a whole heap of information there about how to use this. Um, down here under lectures and presentations, you, this is actually built into PowerPoint now. There's a series of videos that are going to show you some of the awesomeness of this. Um, but in the presentations page, there's actually a list of the headsets that they recommend. Because as I said before, there's there's Recommended headsets, there we go. Yeah, so there's headsets and there's headsets. Um, so I know that usually these are somewhere between two and $300 a headset, um, but the Jabra 930 apparently is very good. Um, apparently also is the, the Sennheiser D10, um, but all of these will work. Um, it just depends on what you're looking for. So some are good for noisy environments, some are not. Some are good for long distance transmission as well. So the idea of these is that you're not tethered, that this is going using Bluetooth. Okay, and you recommend definitely to be using a head a device. Definitely, you'd have to be yeah. using a headset, especially when you're you're in in a lot of noise. Um, I I find that if I'm standing in front of my computer very close, the the translate sorry the translation and the captions can be quite good. Um, but with a headset, it's going to be even better. I won't say near perfect, but it's pretty close. The other thing about this is that when you use it inside your um, uh, when you use it inside PowerPoint, um, it will actually read your PowerPoint slides and then listen for the words that you're speaking. So if you're using um, technical terms, etc., that it's not going to be used to, it will actually read the PowerPoint slides if you put them in your notes or actually in the deck. Um, and then when you say a word, it'll it'll link it to this. It's probably what he means because I don't know that word. I'm being very technical here, as you can tell. Um, but that's basically what it does. And so it's using an artificial intelligence and it's really very cool. Do we have any other questions about that before we move on? No, that's all. Thank you. Okay, great. That's all right. So you guys can see that? Yep. Yep, great. All right. The next thing I want to talk to you about is Windows 10 accessibility. So last time I talked a lot about Office 365 um, and apologies for those that are using um, a Mac or a Chromebook or an iPad. We're actually going to go into Windows 10 land for a little while. Um, but there's a link at the bottom of this uh, screen here, which will show, uh, which will take you into our accessibility portal. Um, we actually see ourselves as um, helping people over these four areas. So there's vision, there's hearing, physical, and cognition as well. But what we've done is we've actually built um, what's called the ease of access center. So in your settings, once upon a time when you're in a Windows device, if you wanted to change the, the, the sound, you'd go over to a sound icon. If you wanted to change the, the picture or display, you'd go to display icon. If you wanted to go over and change the mouse, there was another icon. What we've done now is we've actually built the ease of access center. So everything that's going to make your device more accessible, your Windows device more accessible, sits now here in this, in this space called the ease of access center. So what I'm gonna do, is so I'm actually going to again share my my screen. So you're going to see the back end of my screen now. Um, but I want to take you in and show you. So what I do is I click on settings. And then that brings me into, into the settings. And then I'm going to click on ease of access. 
Now I, I use everything in dark mode um, simply at first because it was something new to do and now I actually find when I use the, the light mode it's um, quite difficult for me to see. I guess I'm getting sensitive eyes as I get older. But um, I come in here into the ease of access center and you can see down here on the left hand side everything is broken into vision or hearing or interaction. Okay, um, so if I'm looking for anything that's going to help um, in terms of helping me see, then for example, if I click on display, you can see here, we can make the text bigger, we can make everything bigger, we can make everything brighter, everything for the display is sitting in the one space. Or if I wanna change my cursor, uh, because perhaps I need the cursor to be bigger or I want the cursor to have a tail so I'm able to track it easier, um, changing the cursor's thickness, etc. There's a lot of settings in there that are really easy to find. Obviously magnifier, I recently found um, how to turn the magnifier on on my, um, on my iPhone, which has changed my life uh, because I've never worn glasses in my life and now I, I need to and I just never take them anywhere. I'm not in the habit and I love having the magnifier on my iPhone. Um, and I've also set it up now that I can hit a triple click and it will turn on the camera and the camera will zoom in on whatever it's facing, um, which is great for helping me read the back of packages when I'm in Coles and Woolworths, it's absolutely brilliant. But we have something similar. So over here, um, I can set up the magnifier and change the zoom level. It's all there for me to see. If you want to change the color filters, so you have dis trouble um, distinguishing colors or you want to reduce um, some of the intensity of colors because of light sensitivity, etc., that can all be done there. Same with contrast. And then there's also narrator, of course. Okay, so narrator itself is, um, once upon a time, narrator was not, really competitive, let, let's be honest, but with the recent um, artificial intelligence that's been built in and the other things that are going on inside Narrator, it's phenomenal. Um, so if you do use a screen reader um, and you're, you know, you're probably using something like JAWS, um, but maybe you're not wanting to fork out for something like that, you don't need it um, to, to, to an extreme, then I suggest you go in and explore Narrator. But you can see, of course, down here, you can change things like the audio, you can set up closed captions, so that way whenever you turn captions on, it's exactly how you want it to be. Um, and then, of course, there's things like um, speech, setting up your keyboard, uh, your mouse, and if you use eye gaze technology, um, that's now, a, a lot of these are native, um, native input into Windows 10, which is really exciting. So you don't necessarily uh, need to have third-party software to be running your eye gaze technology in Windows 10. So I think that's that's quite exciting. So that's the that's the ease of access center. I'm just going to jump back now into my PowerPoint. Got to work out where it is. Yeah, and sorry, I haven't got any um, questions to fill in the time. But anyway, no <laughs> worries, all good. Just a reminder: if you've got any questions for Troy, please keep them coming. Yeah. So can you guys see that ease of access center screen again? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. So we've done the demo. So let's keep moving. Another thing I wanted to draw oh, your... The, um, the actual PowerPoint though is on um, the wrong screen now. You've gone into your um, presenter mode. We've got that, that. Oh, you've got the presenter mode here. Yep. Okay. Sorry, well, for what it's worth, while we're here, let me show you when you're in presenter mode, there's a little button here and that's where we turn our subtitles on and off because it's native to Windows now. So if I was to click that, you can see the subtitles are starting. It's listening to my voice. Hopefully it's not going over the top of the other subtitles, but that's happening in real time, which is pretty exciting. So that's just that subtitle button there. The other thing is you can set your subtitles over here in subtitle settings. Um, you can set that up, um, which, is, which is pretty awesome. All right, so let's try and get that back into sharing what, in another way. Yeah, if you can do two things at once. Is there a list of hearing aid brands which are compatible with Microsoft Suite at all? Um, you know what, there are, and I'm sorry off the top of my head, I don't know, but if we can note that question, yep. I'll find out. Brilliant. Because I know that um, the, the translator, what they've done is um, they've actually set the translator to be able to connect to, to some, of these, um, some of these systems that people are using. Um, they've also set translator to actually be able to hear um, what I'm gonna call a, a hearing impaired accent. So whilst the translator will listen for other accents, now we'll actually listen for a deafness accent and be able to pick that up as well, which is really exciting. Brilliant. Okay, so the next one is the disability answers desk. So I wanna draw your attention to that. The disability answers desk, I've put a link in the slides, 
Um, it's funny, now I'm going to take us back out and show us over here. So the Disability Answers Desk is great because a lot of people don't realise this and I think it's actually a bit of a game changer. Can you see the Disability Answers Desk page now, ladies? Yeah, we can. Thanks, yeah. Roy. So the Disability uh, Answer Desk is um, run out of the US. Um, they do they do some amazing stuff. Like They've got a, a learning webinar series, which is here, and I'll, I will provide you with these links inside the, inside the slides, but you can um, access previous webinars and also sign up for upcoming webinars. And this is done by the developers and the people that are actually involved in producing th this stuff. So that they're phenomenal. Um, but there's a number of different um, pages you can go in around accessibility resources. But what I wanted to share with you most importantly is here. So you've got the accessibility support. So there's a 24 seven chat Okay, so it's not a bot at the end, it's actually a real person. So you can go in and start typing and chatting with people. Um, but even more importantly over here is the 1800 number. So from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, uh, Monday to Friday, and then 10 till 6 on Saturday and Sunday, you can call that number and have a real person at the end of the line talking you through um, y your questions and your challenges and giving you advice, etc. I, I think that that's actually a real game changer for a lot of people that they can actually have a real person. I can't guarantee that that's going to be an Australian person, but it will be a real person. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my, my slides. You let me know when you can see that accessibility page again. I can. Thank you. Great. One thing that's really cool is we've actually built immersive reader into Minecraft, right? So Minecraft um, is the world's most popular video game of all time. Um, and we've just noticed recently that there's 112 million people playing this every month. Right, so you think about that, that's you know, five times the size of Australia almost. Um, and so we've built Immersive Reader into Minecraft now, which is exciting. So what happens is when you come to, what used to happen is you'd come to a piece of text and there was nothing you could do beyond just see the text. And now Immersive Reader, which we looked at last time, is actually built in. And we've even thrown in picture dictionary around some of the, um, some of the Minecraft characters, etc. So that's really, really cool. I did share this last time, but I'll share it again. And that is that the um, Inclusive Classroom IT Deployment Guides are available. So this is the, the, the link there is what you would um, dig up and give to your IT manager or IT um, support people at your school or your university or your organization. And that will actually help them to make sure that everything that needs to be switched on and everything that needs to, to be deployed is actually available. So that's actually worth its weight in gold. So thinking about what we've got now in terms of the inclusive classroom, we've got learning tools with um, Immersive Reader, of course, um, and I talked about that last time. I did talk about word prediction as well, which is now in the Australian language. So just like on your mobile phone, as you start to type words anywhere in Windows 10, it'll actually bring up some suggestions. You've got Dictate as well. Dictate is about to um, be updated to be even more powerful. I think last time I spoke to you guys, I may have given you a bum steer and said that as you stay on the same device, um, you'll actually get, uh, the, the dictate will get to know you. I spoke to the guys in the, in the US, guys and girls in the US, and it turns out that's not true. Um, what it actually is, is the more of us that use it, the, the better it gets. Um, so it doesn't matter which device you're on, it's not going to be any better if you use your own uh, Windows machine. Um, but the more of us that use it, the more the, um, the machine learning kicks in, and this, um, this artificial intelligence will actually learn. Um, last time I showed us a little bit about editor as well. Um, so hopefully you can remember some of the cool things we did there. And of course there was the um, ease of access center, which we looked at today. I'm certainly loving with the, um, the dictionary, you know, when you've got, you know, you typed a word and you're not quite sure of if you've got the right word for the meaning, that's kind of coming up now in my emails and it's like, yay. Oh, great. <laughs> it's so you exciting. I, yeah. I, yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't need that support and I found that to be really quite frustrating really quickly. Um, but people that need that, I, I know it's a game changer. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, so 
Microsoft Translator, which we looked at today, I want to draw your attention back to that and some of the ways that, that can be used for um, EAL scenarios, English as a second language, um, also when we're trying to communicate with people in a completely different language to one that we speak. I think I showed you guys Office Lens last time. Of course, we've got the Accessibility Checker as well. So the Accessibility Checker inside um, Office will actually optimize our document um, in, in the best way. And the cool thing about that is it will not only show us what needs to change, it will show us why we need to change it and then give us the steps on how to change it, which is really good. Um, it can be quite laborious, that process. So the, the, the why is, is really nice to show us that, okay, if, if people in your audience are challenged by this or challenged by that, and if you know your audience, then you know what you can skip um, as well as, um, you know, you know that you need to work on some of those areas. The automatic alt text is nice. So those that are using screen readers, um, the artificial intelligence will make suggestions. It's getting better and better, um, but you also get the option to go in and sort of tweak that a little bit. And the other one is Microsoft Stream, which is part of your 365 um, subscription now. And that um, will create transcripts and, um, and captioning and things like that for videos as well. So as, as we sort of come on the, it's not quite the home stretch, but I just did want to draw your attention to what I think is really important in part, as, part, as far as the inclusive classroom, excuse me. Remembering that this is part two of, so I, I would suggest that we go back and look at part one and get our heads a little around, a little bit around some of the things that are there. But I would like to suggest that we make these things more available to students. All right, so these are all part of our University 365 um, subscriptions. So, you know, there's no outlay from, from students, but also getting the lecturers and the tutors to get their heads around this stuff and knowing that if they just start to use some of these tools in their lectures or in, in some of their tutes, that this is actually going to make their, their learning engagements far more accessible. I think it's really important that student support staff know about these things um, and that we, um, we steer them to these webinars so that they can start to do their research and build this stuff into, um, uh, into the support that they're giving. I think the institution decision makers is key. Um, making sure that, um, that these people, you know, these stakeholders know what's available and what, what the university owns and start to um, push to have these rolled out. And then lastly, of course, is the families and the carers um, and significant others in our, in our lives. Um, I think we need to, to, to make this um, available to them and make, uh, make sure that they're on top of this as well. So how do we do all that? Well, we have a website called education.microsoft.com. Um, it's, sorry, it's actually called the Microsoft Educator Community, but it's education.microsoft.com. Um, and what happens is you can come in and sign in with a free Microsoft account, or if you've got your uni or organization email, you can sign in using 365, um, and it will keep a record of everything that you've done. But there's a whole heap of um, workshops and online courses in there for you to access. Um, one in particular that I want to draw your attention to is called Empower Every Student with an Inclusive Classroom. And that's pretty much the, the course behind uh, part one that we did some months ago. So I would suggest that um, you go back um, to this and it will teach you how to use uh, Immersive Reader, it will teach you how to use Dictate, it will show you Office Lens and all these other cool tools and you can keep it as a reference. But even more importantly, you can actually steer other people to this and say, hey, you do this course and you can see all the great things that, um, that you can do and that you can support your students with or your, your colleagues, etc. What we've also done is we know that there's going to be a lot of people that um, they're going to think, how can I present this to my staff or how can I present this to my colleagues? Um, we've actually built presenter-led trainings for you. So you don't have to do the heavy lifting. Um, the course is actually built in. It's a four-hour course, which you could deliver over, you know, over four days or you could deliver it in a half day, depending on how you want to present it. Um, but this course is absolutely brilliant. Um, and it, again, it's not the heavy lifting is not done by you as a presenter. It's done by us and prepared that for you. So Troy, is it, um, oh, oh, sorry if I was answering your question, so I wasn't listening to the beginning. So would it be suitable like for the TAFEs and unis as well? It's 100%. Not too, yeah. yeah, so it's not too kind of young people orientated. No, no, exactly no, right. Brilliant. So, um, and it could just be adapted. Yeah. Right. So if there's anything that's, you know, a little bit 2K to 12, you just bump it out. The other one here is mobile tools for inclusive classrooms. So it's looking at using your iPads and your, um, your tablet devices and your phones and things like that. So that's a, another, another nice uh, presentation that you can actually lead for your staff or your colleagues. The other one, the other link I've got here is um, this is a 
God help you if you actually make the end of this list, but everything that we've got in the space around um, using these tools in an inclusive classroom, um, and again, this is not just K-12, but right through into university. So there's a whole heap of links and bits and pieces there as well. Um, I've put an extra link up here, click here, click here to access, and you can jump in and um, explore that. So I wanted to also give you some information around how to connect with us and how to um, uh, find out more. So obviously there's Disabilities Answers Desk, which we saw a moment ago. Um, so that link is there in the slides that you can access that. The other one I wanna share with you is the Microsoft Accessibility YouTube channel. So I'm just going to do a new share here, jump into my page here. You can hear my doggy in the background. Um, so yeah, this is the, the YouTube channel. Um, and again, those absolutely brilliant people um, in the accessibility space, and some of them in that space obviously ch are challenged by, uh, through disabilities themselves, um, they have actually built some great videos for you. Um, and uh, they'll be as accessible as they possibly can be. Um, but I do suggest that you go in and have a bit of a play around in there. The other thing I wanna draw your attention to is how to give feedback. Um, Microsoft Accessibility Accessibility feedback, and that again is on is on that slide. Microsoft accessibility feedback is is you know it, it, again it's gold. So as you um, make a suggestion, what happens is um, that suggestion will come up, um, and then people can actually vote on that. Um, so what happens is you can see, for example, someone wants to see highlighting colours, you can actually vote. Um, you can add your own suggestions, create categories, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but they do genuinely pay attention to this because um, obviously being, you know, um, in, an, in a, a research lab somewhere is very different to being in the field. So they genuinely want to hear from you. So I want to draw your attention to that one. If you're on Twitter, um, one of my favorite Twitter handles to follow is MSFT Enable, and that's Microsoft Accessibility. And again, real people at the end of that, um, listening to you and have, you can have conversations with them, make suggestions. It's a great way to connect. One thing I have found um, working for Microsoft is um, very much open to hear from, um, from the public and fr from the audiences. So please connect there. Um, if you uh, are wanting to explore some of um, some of the, the thought leadership at Microsoft. We've, uh, there's an ebook that's just been published um, called The Invisible Opportunity. So it's looking at the business case for accessibility and inclusivity. So what Microsoft have done is um, not just the business case for Microsoft's perspective, but for, for any business and what is in it um, for the business to actually make their um, environments more accessible and, and cater more to the margins, et cetera. So a great ebook, really worth going in and having a read. Um, this one is one of my favorites. This one was called The Ability Hacks. I'm just gonna bring it down. So this is another ebook that's available to you and it's, it's completely free. And it tells the story of um, Immersive Reader and how Immersive Reader was developed and, and how immersive, what, what Immersive Reader went through to actually come out um, onto, onto the devices that we have today and the apps we have today. And also around um, the eye gaze technology that was built um, for Steve Gleason. Uh, a former um, NFL player and and really, really inspiring and really encouraging. So yeah, get in there and have a look at that. Um, and then um, I think that's pretty much it in terms of that. I've also got, I'm just gonna jump back into my, into my slides. Excellent. So I've just got one quiz question. When please. using the translator app, is there a way of editing, correcting incorrect words or improving accuracy? No, um, not not in that sense. Um, but what you can do is because you're seeing uh, because you're seeing it in real time, um, you can actually be watching for your own errors um, if you're able to. Um, but it's just the more that we all use it, the better the accu the, the more accurate it becomes because it's machine learning. Um, the other thing too, I've got a series of videos here, which are really nice videos showing some of the great stuff that's going on at Microsoft in this space. And then finally, I want to, as I said to you before, I want to stay connected with you. So please feel free to connect with me through, um, through Twitter, through LinkedIn and through Facebook. So looking at that quarter two, I think I've done pretty well. Um, I would love to hear any questions. If, if there are any more, I'm happy to wait around. Yep. No, that's great. Thank you, Troy. That's brilliant. 
Um, yeah, I, for me, the um, lecture, the suite for the lecturers or teachers to be able to, um, you know, provide them with details is such a powerful thing. I think as us as practitioners across the country will be able to use. I think it's often hard to get that buy-in from, you know, our IT staff, etc. So it's going to be great to be able to have that to use. Um, there's a question here. I'm an iPad Apple user with Office 365 for Mac. So all are all the apps workable for me too? No. Um, so there are features. Obviously, all the apps are there 100%, but the features differ according to platform. So you're going to get a different experience on an iPad than you will on a Mac, than you will on a PC, than you will on a um, an Android phone, etc. So um, so unfortunately, not everything is available on every uh, every platform, but as time goes on, these get rolled out. Um, but the best experience you're going to have, obviously, it's this is Microsoft, and you're going to have the best experience on a Windows 10 um, touch and, and stylus enabled device. Um, but at the same time, for example, Read Aloud just came out on the Edge uh, browser for iPhone, for example, which wasn't there a couple of weeks ago. So it's constantly being updated, but I don't, I don't want to lead you to believe that you're going to get exactly the same experience on a non Windows device. Okay, someone's just wanted to say thank you. Microsoft is doing a great job to make accessibility easy for all. Love to hear about these new options. So, yeah, can I, can I respond to that and say, I know, um, I, I'm, I'm not naive to think that this is anything to do with me. I'm standing on the shoulders of some very passionate, very bright people that build this stuff. And, and part of the joy in my job is going out and just telling um, audiences like you guys all about this stuff, which excites me and it's great. But there are some really passionate people. Um, and I was talking about Will Lewis before, who was um, you know presenting around Translator, telling him the stories of what I see and how people are using this um, really excites him. You know, so yeah, it, it is it is a really good thing and it's nice to be a part of. But there's some very very bright people with great big hearts. Um, building this stuff. And what's happened as well is it's actually started to drive business, right? So Microsoft is a company. Microsoft is a big company and they, they like to make money. Um, and as they've started to build around this um, inclusive design, um, they've actually started to open up new markets for themselves. So they've done it because it's the right thing to do, but, you know, karma follows and, and next thing you know, they're, they're opening up new markets and new audiences, which is great. Now, there's just another question around um, configuring our PCs for our personal use, so the colour, contrast and the like. Yep. What's the best way to transfer these settings to our next computers when we change over? Are they, sure. they cloud-based? So, Does it come over? Or? Yeah, that's exactly right. So within Windows, you can actually set your Windows settings um, to remember everything regardless of what device you're signing into. So obviously in my role at Microsoft, I've got a number of devices that I need to use for different scenarios. Every time I turn on my device, my settings are exactly the same. So whether I'm on my Surface Pro or my Surface Go or my Surface Laptop, um, sounds like I'm bragging, doesn't it? But um, uh, when I turn these on, the settings are exactly the same. So what you would do is, because they're cloud-based, the settings, you would just make sure that the settings are, are there. And again, just go into your, um, uh, into your browser and type in how to save my Windows 10 settings or something like that, and then the instructions will come up. And then what that means is when you turn your new computer on, sign in with your, with your, your e email and password, it'll set that up with, with those settings. Brilliant. Um, there's a question here, and sorry, Jodie, I'm not understanding it, but hopefully Troy will. Um, just the link that you need for the tech um, power, PPL to get no P people. Tech. It'll be people. people. People, okay. To get them to load 365. Yep. So, so that's in the slides. Yep. Um, so that's the inclusive classroom deployment guide. So that that link there is in the in the slides. So that should work for you. If not, let me know and I'll I'll update. Really? Sorry, I didn't um, understand the shortage of shortage of people. Maybe one of those days today. Um, so just to let people know that with the um, PowerPoint presentation um, that will be up. Um, hopefully tomorrow afternoon with the um, recording, but we will be sending out a email to all those registered so you will know when they're up. So just give people one more minute. Um, is there any more questions before we um, to hang up? Oh, actually, one of the other questions was, does Microsoft have a communication strategy with universities and TAFEs that you know have got the Microsoft suite around the accessibility? Um, Yes and no. So largely that's that's my role in, in Australia. 
Um, so for example, in uh, early October, I'm going up to Griffith University and I'm running an accessibility, well, I'm part of an accessibility day. Um, occasionally I'll be called into universities like um, RMIT, et cetera, to do some training. Um, we, have, we have account executives who are very, very close um, to some of the key decision makers in the university, um, trying to communicate the, the accessibility message and the inclusive classroom message to those, to those people inside those universities sometimes can be a challenge. That's why I put up that slide and said, hey, let's all do this together. <laughs> let's, let's make noise um, and try and influence these people so that when, when the Microsoft people do come in and say accessibility, you know, these people will be primed and say, hey, I've heard about this, tell me more. Um, but as you can imagine, it's, you know, there's so many universities, so many people that we're trying to reach. It's, it's a challenge to scale. But that's why I do things like webinars like this and connect with AdSet um, in an attempt to try and get the word out. Brilliant. All right. Well, that looks like all the questions. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, thank you, Troy, for, for doing this. It's I think every time I hear you speak, I, I learn another three or four things and, and are building my confidence. So, so thank you. So it's great for me to have great PD. Um, just to give a plug out that we do have another webinar next week. We're just banging them out at the end of the year. Um, so next week is on Wednesday next week at the same time, 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. And the topic there is NDIS. Um, we're going to hear from uh, disability practitioners from the university and TAFE sector around their experience around um, NDIS, um, what the students are experiencing, what the universities and TAFEs are experiencing, and we will have lots of time for questions because um, it will be a panel discussion. So thank you all for joining us, um, and I think there's one of you, hopefully the PowerPoint press, uh, the um, PDF will provide you with all um, the answers you need as well. And please get in contact with Troy, he's brilliant. I follow him on Twitter and Facebook and, um, and in, enjoy hearing about what's um, anything new that's happening. So have a great day, everybody, and thank you.